On behalf of the Governance Task Group of Vision 2020 and the League of Women Voters of Arlington, we want to welcome you to an introduction to town meeting. And we're very pleased this evening to have our town moderator, John Leone, who will be leading the presentation. Um, John's been a town meeting member now for almost 20 years, and he's starting his third term as our moderator. Thank you. Good evening. I'm John, like John Leone, she introduced. I'm the moderator. Um, I basically, what the moderator does, if you're familiar at all with town meeting or not, you'll get familiar with me pretty quickly. I'm essentially the chairman of town meeting. I sit up on the stage with the town clerk and the town stenographer, Gabe, the clerk is Stephanie Lucarelli, and I run the show. Um, it's the ringmaster, so to speak. I get to sit in the big throne, and we go through the warrant. You all got this in either the advocate or in the packages you received. We'll go over this in a minute. Now, how many people here are new town meeting members? All right, so you got your big package the other day. You looked through it and said, what the heck's all this stuff? Um, we're going to go through that, and after I finish, we'll have the questions and the answers. If you want to say anything, you're going to have to come up front, because we are having this um, recorded for cable, and they're going to rebroadcast it a couple times for those who couldn't meet. So the first night we're going to be here is Monday the 22nd, which is just three or four days from now. You'll come in the front door, and there's two sets of doors, as you know, in the town hall. Go in the left door. You'll go in, and there'll be a little table there with Janice Weaver, one of the assistant clerks, who's going to check you in. You just tell her your name, your precinct, you're checked in. And then behind you, as you come in, there's going to be a long eight-foot table. There's going to be more material there. You're going to get more stuff than you know what to do with. Hopefully, Monday night is also going to be the Finance Committee report. You want to pick one of those up. You'll want to pick up whatever else looks new and then keep it every night after you check in. Check that table because there's always new handouts, new materials, and that's really what's going to be important to us because the warrant that you received, this um, was compiled in December and January, December of last year, January of this year, released out to the public. It is essentially um, the the warrant, it's, it's warning. This is warning the citizens of Arlington that we're going to talk about these 52 items and five items in the special town meeting, and that's what we're going to discuss. This is our agenda. If it's not in the warrant, we're not going to discuss it. Um, it also, the warrant articles lay out what the topic is, and I, as the moderator, get to decide if someone's a motion or substitute or someone gets up and starts giving a speech that's not within the four corners of the warrant article, I can tell them to be quiet because it's outside the scope. The <coughs> scope of the article is defined by the words printed in the warrant. You start talking beyond that, I'm going to shut you down. Um, we have a strict seven-minute first-time rule for speaking. It's in our bylaws. And five minutes, your second time up. I adhere by those time limits pretty, pretty religiously. I might, if I can tell you're at the very end and you've got two more seconds, I might let you finish, but generally when it gets to a 30 seconds near the end, I'm going to tell you. When it gets to seven minutes, I'm going to tell you again, and there's a little red light in front of you, it's going to go on and it's going to start being annoying and buzzing. And if you still don't be quiet, I'll gavel you down. Um, and the meeting will start yelling at me to yell at you if you don't stop talking because they want to hear everybody, everybody should have a chance to speak. So we're going to start out the night on the, se on the 22nd. The Minuteman will hopefully be here. They'll march in. They'll give us a little fife and drum show. Um, we'll have a pastor come in and give us a prayer. And then we're going to jump right into it, Article 1, Article 2, so forth, right in. So we're going to start right away the first night. So you should look through your materials. Um, you've been elected. That means you really want to do this. You want to be a town meeting member. Um, you're here for all 52 articles. So. These materials that you got are actually what we're going to be voting on. The warrant is just giving us a, a brief, what we're going to talk about. Um, the Board of Selectmen report. There, they have a lot of, you'll look at that, and it'll say, I'm going to find one. This isn't a particularly long one. It must be a doggy one. It is. Article 14. Bylaw amendment to allow self-serve gas stations. It says voted. Where it says voted, that is actually what we're going to discuss. We're going to talk about what's recommended vote of the selectmen, or if this finance committee has the recommended vote, they deal with all the finance articles. 
the, um, we got the electronic study, electronic voting committee study. I'll go over that in a minute. The redevelopment board has recommended votes. So you have to actually do a little bit of juggling. You have to look and see what article in the warrant is, find the recommended vote in the different committee's reports, and then flip back and forth. Um, my first couple of years, and most people you'll see, they will be picking up books and putting them down. It's almost easiest to get your scissors out and cut and paste. I mean, I'm, I'm kind of anal about it, I do that. Um, it makes it a lot easier, because then you can just flip and say, okay, we're on Article 14, flip the page, you're on Article 14. Otherwise, you're gonna be picking the books up. It's not that bad. It's not as daunting as it seems. Um, so we're only gonna discuss what the recommended vote is. You'll see in some spots it says no action. If it says recommended vote and no action, that means whoever was the proponent of the article, be it a citizen, or be it with the selectman or the town manager, and they don't wanna go forward with it, we vote no action. No action means we're not even gonna discuss it. I'm gonna say recommended vote and no action, all in favor. Even if one person says yes, I'm gonna say, so um, we have vote and no action, I'm gonna move on. We're not gonna talk about it if there's no action. So if you wanna talk about something, hey, eh, don't worry about it. If you wanna talk about something that's a no action vote, you have to have a substitute motion. Um, I can give you, if you oh, you got my letter that has my email address and phone number on it up the top. Call me, email me, I'll send you the substitute motion form, I'll tell you how to do it, I'll help you do it. Um, why do I do all that? I want town meeting to run smoothly, I want everybody to know what they're doing. One of the only hard and fast rules that I have that's not in the bylaws, if you do have a substitute motion or an amendment that's pretty substantial, one word, I'll let you slide. But if it's a radical change to what's the recommended vote is, you have to have that on everybody's seats, just as you got these little pieces of paper today, the day before we're gonna talk about it. So if we were gonna talk about it Wednesday, you have to have it to everybody Monday. The only exception is Monday, because that's our first day. So if you have a recommended or a, an amendment or a substitute for Monday, bring it in, put it on everybody's chair. Uh, why do I do that? So you all can see what it, the substitute motions are, amended motions are, and you can be well educated and well informed about it. Because when I was a town meeting member, we didn't have this rule. And we would get six or seven page amendments on our chair the night we're supposed to vote on. And I'm a, I'll admit it, I'm a slow reader. I wouldn't be able to finish reading the thing before someone moved the question and we're supposed to vote on it. It just buggered me. So, in the moderators, the moderators have an association, as everybody does. One of the other moderators said, well, they have a rule similar to this in their town, except they have a um, one week notice. And I said, well, oh, Arlington won't go for that. I'm gonna have a 48 hour rule. So that's in my letter, hopefully you read my letter. Um, I tried to explain all this. That's the 48 hour rule. I've been called, uh, a dictator trying to stifle debate, trying to control what goes on in the meeting. Call me what you want, I don't care. Um, I, I, I have the rule and that's what it's gonna be. Um, fortunately for me, bad for you, moderators' uh, uh, um, decisions aren't appealable. The only thing you can appeal is a vote. How do we vote? We get the recommended vote of the selectmen, Article 14, Everybody gets up and talks. I'll explain that in a minute. Um, when no one, someone moves a question or no one else wants to talk, I'll say, okay, we have the recommended vote in Article 14. All in favor say yes. Everybody yells out yes. All in favor say no. Everyone yells out no. I choose which one was louder, which one sounded better. <laughs> and it's actually, I'd say I'm about 95% of the time I get it right. Um, if five members Random five people in the audience think the moderator got it wrong, they stand up. And some will stand up and say, doubt the vote. And they'll look around and get five other people to stand. So we have a standing vote. And I'll say, all right, our own favor, stand. Everybody who wants it stands up. <coughs> I have four tellers, they go and they count, and then they report back, and we do the math, and we see who won. That's how you appeal. If you really don't like it, and you get 30 members to stand up. 
we have a roll call vote. Mr. Harrington in the back had our first roll call in about 15 years last year. Um, there might be more this year. Wait till next year and we have electronic voting. <laughs> um, roll call is literally that. I have, a rec I have a list of all the town meeting members. I start at precinct one, the first name of the list, and I go through it. It took about tw 20 minutes. Well, that was just to do the call. Then we had to go up and add. So by the time we finished, it was probably 35, 40 minutes, um, start to finish. Um, why would you want to roll call? You want to see how people voted. You wanted people to actually stand up and say, I'm in favor of this, I'm not in favor of that. Generally, you, unless it's a hot button issue, like the leaf blowers was last year, people are happy with a standing vote. They don't really care if there's a, a roll call or not. I said, that's, that was my second roll call in my 19 years as a town meeting member. Um, I can't even remember what the first one was for. It had been so long ago. Patriot Act. Nope. It was, it was in the er mid-90s. It was something about whether or not we were going to let either some guy become a cop or a firefighter to take the test when he was in his mid-40s or something like that. Um, there's one of those on this year's Warren too. You'll see it's around 48 or something, I think, around there. Um, but there was a controversy with, and we did a roll call on that issue, or it had something to do with the cops or their pay or something like that. But generally, we don't have them. Um, the meeting moves along. Most town meeting members, in their first year, they're sort of in awe and like, what the heck is going on here? It takes them a year or two before they get their feet and want to stand up and talk. Others, first year, they're standing right up participating. I think that's great. Um, the more new blood we can get in, the more people with different opinions than hearing the same 12 people talk in every single article. I'm all in favor of it. Um, so I, if you want to talk on an article, after I call the article, I'll say, okay, Article 14, we're done with that. Now Article 15, um, recommend a vote of no, um, so and so. Um, the selectmen, if it's their article, because they're the ones reporting on it in their little book, or the finance committee, if it's a finance article, or the redevelopment board, if it's a zoning issue, they'll get up and give their presentation. And while they're presenting, you'll see the members all raising their hands like madmen. They're trying to get mine and Stephanie's attention. We keep a list. Um, I don't know all your names yet. It's going to take me a little while to figure out who you are. I'll say the guy in the black, rat, black shirt, four rows back, until I get your name. When I take, then sometimes it takes me a day to remember who everybody is. I'm generally pretty good. Between us, we get people's names. Um, and then once we recognize you, we'll either point at you or give you some sort of signal that I saw you raise your hand. You're on the list. You don't have to keep raising your hand. You may not know where you are on that list. You may not get called. You may not get reached. But you're on there. I saw you. It's just the, up to the crowd how long they want to talk about it. After we've heard debate for a while, things will start to repeat. I might say something like, anything new to add? If does anybody else have something we haven't heard about? People have a tendency. This guy over here gets up and tells us a five-minute colloquy about why it's so wonderful to walk his dog and let it poop on the sidewalk. The next person is going to get up and say the same thing. We heard it. We don't want to hear it again. Just get up and say, I agree with what he said. And if you had something new to add, say it. I, I've been saying that for six years. It doesn't work. People get up and repeat. It stretches the meeting out, but what are you going to do? Eventually, someone's going to get up and say these magic words. I move to terminate debate on the article and all issues before it. That's all you can say. If you, don't, if you say anything more than those words, it can't terminate debate. Terminating debate means I've had enough. I want to stop talking about it. I want to vote on it. You've now made a motion, which is a privileged motion. In my letter, I also gave you a, um, a parliamentary guide. These are all the different kind of motions. Motion to terminate debate is a privileged motion. It, as soon as you make it, we stop talking about the article, and I take a vote on termination of debate. It takes two-thirds of the members to terminate debate. 
So if two-thirds of the other people want to stop, we're going to stop. If they don't, we keep going. If you get up and say, I motion to terminate the debate because I really like to have dogs poop on the sidewalk and I don't want to have to pick it up, you've blown it. You can't terminate the debate. You're done. You're off the list. We have to wait for someone else to do it. So if you want to, use just those words. And that's in our bylaws, motion to terminate the debate. And the fact you can only use those words. So you don't get a last crack at the argument. You just have to move right in and do it. So that's how you, what we're going to talk about, what we're going to, how we talk about it, and how we terminate the debate and vote. At that point is when I call the vote, all in favor, um, all opposed, and we move on or we keep talking. Um, if you don't like what they have written, you have the right to substitute or make a motion to, to amend. That is, you are going to take, and you'll see these. I've already seen four or five of them. You'll see them on your chairs Monday night. People don't exactly like what the selectmen have recommended. Just because they said it doesn't mean we have to do it. We're our own legislative body. We set the town bylaws. We set how our budget, if you add up all the money, we're going to spend about $100 million between the school budget, the town budget. We're going to go through all that. We're going to spend that money. We get to decide how it's spent. Al Tosti, chairman of the finance committee, is going to give it to us and say, this is it. You can't touch it. That's not true. If you want to make a motion to change some money from that account to that account, you can do it. You can make, get up and make that motion to pay this person more, pay that person less, or whatever it is. As long as we keep the ba budget balanced, you can move money around, you can add, you can subtract to any of the recommended votes in any of these booklets that you get. And that's done by that substitute motion. Um, and then we vote on it. I'll get up and I'll say, I have a motion to amend this article made by Mr. Harrington. Um, he wants to add the words such and such, such and such here. And I'll take a vote on it. If the crowd likes it, that's in. And then at the end of the votes, we will then vote on it. Um, so you, as the legislative body, which we really are, have the right to change it, to amend it, vote it up, vote it down, decide not to do it. And then we're just going to go through the warrant from the beginning to the end. We don't jump all around, except in certain circumstances, one of which I will tell you about in a few minutes. Um, we generally follow right from. So you're going to be able to see where we started today and take a pretty good guess. We're going to reach this article tomorrow. We're going pretty slow. We're not going to reach that article for two days. Um, so you'll know. If you have a substitute, you'll know when you should get it ready. I think anybody who has such a substitute has had these for only a few days, but you should work on it over the weekend. Um, run it by me Monday, and we should be, you should have them ready by you know, Monday night or Tuesday at the latest. I'm hoping Monday, besides all the pomp and circumstances first thing, in the mo um, first thing we may get through I'm hoping we get to article, at least Article 12 Monday night. I want to, um, so most of them are housekeeping type articles, things that are there every year or they're no action. So we're going to move right through and we could get up to 12 by Monday. Wednesday night, we're going to open the regular town meeting, instantly adjourn it, and open the special town meeting. You say, what's a special town meeting? Well, on the back of the warrant, you'll see it. Um, a special town meeting is the selectmen call it if they want or a hundred citizens can get together and get a warrant article and call for a special town meeting on items that aren't in the regular annual but they didn't get everything in time for the annual so they come in with a special. Uh, some town, towns have a special every single fall no matter what. Arlington, we generally get it all done in the spring. We don't have too many fall specials, only in certain certain circum circumstances. Um, hundred, hundred citizens get together and uh, present a warrant article. They have to open it, they being the selectmen. So Monday, Wednesday, we're going to have five articles on a special. The selectmen opened it and some other ones got thrown in there. Probably much to their chagrin, but what are you going to do? Um, once they open it up, it's up to the citizens to do what they want to do to it. 
Um, on the special, there's, as far as I'm concerned, two big ones. One is the leaf blower one, and the other is the plastic water bottles. Some high schoolers want to ban these things. Um, say good luck for them, you know, a little civics lesson personally. <laughs> I like them. <laughs> But I, I'm just a moderator, I can't stop them. Yeah, <laughs> I'm going to have mine right there. See, you want to take it away from me? Um, and then we, we'll close the special hopefully Wednesday as well. And then that will be done. We'll go right back into the regular town meeting. Is that? Oh, I thought someone said something. Um, that, that's generally the flow of it. You can sit any way you want. Um, I could tell you where certain clicks sit just because I've been there long enough. But there are certain places where different cliques sit, and some people will sit in the same exact chair year after year after year. So if someone comes up to you and looks at you, um, you might be in their chair. They can't ask you to move, but they're going to get there five minutes earlier to get their chair back. Um, it's funny. It's, you'll see it. People will grab that same chair year after year. I confounded people. I moved around all the time until I found someone I like to joke with. Um, so that, that's the basic functioning of town meeting. It's really not um, that intimidating. It's not that hard to figure out. It's just sort of once getting the rhythm and the flow of it. The town meeting does have a certain flow. It has a certain um, culture that we follow. Basically, we have very few rules. Um, our rules are all set out in our bylaws. Like I said before, the only other rules that I can mandate is that 48-hour rule. Otherwise, it's the way it is. It just kind of functions. Other towns have extreme, extremely detailed rules and procedures. And I go to the moderator meetings, and I just shake my head saying, I could never get away with that. I couldn't do that. Uh, um, and they were amazed that I don't have a set of rules and procedures. But I don't think we need them. Um, we're all adults. We all can act in a civil manner, um, <clears throat> which brings me to another point. On the back of my letter, I gave you the, the oath of office. The town, um, town Government Reorganization Committee a couple of years ago changed our oath of office. Um, they had been tasked with seeing if town government needed to be changed. The bottom line was they said it didn't, except we did come up with couple certain things that we did change, basically make it more transparent to the people, um, provide sets of financial data in easily readable fashion and formats, and they changed the oath of office. Because the year before, debate had, um, oh my goodness, how do I want to put it? It had gotten a little nasty. People were name calling, they would get up, and before I could stop them, they would say, He's a jerk for thinking that, or he shouldn't, you know, it just got down to personal attacks, which are not what we, not what we're all about. You can disagree with me, but you can't call me a name. Um, and if you call me a name, that means I'm just going to get up and call you a name, and it's going to be a schoolyard fight, and we don't want that. So in our pledge, they made us promise we're not going to do that. So hopefully we'll all follow with that bit of decorum. Um, the only mo motions you can make um, when you're not called on, if you want to just stand up, is a point of privilege, personal privilege, or a point of order. Point of personal privilege, in my interpretation of it, is it's really hot in here. Can you open a window? It's very noisy back here. I can't hear. I don't know what we're voting on, which a point of order is the same. Mr. Moderator, this guy's not a town meeting member. He shouldn't be in the enclosure. Only town meeting members are supposed to be in on the floor. This um, point of order, they're, they're, they're scope. They're with beyond the scope of the article. Those are the only couple things you can interrupt the speaker with. Um, otherwise, you have to wait your turn. The rules that we do go by are contained in my favorite book, Town Meeting Time. Um, it's ha it looks big. Half of its history of town meetings, how we arrived at where we are. And the other half is a detailed explanation of all of these um, parliamentary guides, parliamentary facts. It's, you, you'll read over here a certain motion in the book. It will tell you by a page and a half 
wh why we have that motion, how it's used, how it's made, and how it's generally interpreted. We've used town meeting time as our guide as opposed to a Robert's Rules of Order. I don't know if you ever looked at Robert's Rules. They have about, I think, 685 rules. We, we don't need them. They're impossible to keep track of, and they have such rules as how many minutes before this, how many minutes. It's just we don't need them. We go by town meeting time. I have a little list up here I'll give you afterwards. If you're interested, you can get your own copy of this. They have, I think they have some at the library. You go down and read them, take them out. Um, it's an interesting book. Um, if you plan on being in town meeting for any length of time or even a three-year term, I'd suggest you go ahead and get it. Doesn't change that often. This one has been in publication, I believe, for about 15 years, 20 years, and there's no uh, amend, no um, abridgments in the offering, so they're not going to be changing it anytime soon. So it, this is our, besides our few rules in the bylaws, this is what we use for rules. And if you question me, I'm, you'll see me get in the book. I'll get it out and I'll say, nope, town meeting time, page 116, it says this. Um, I've read it and then highlighted the things that people always discuss. Before I was the moderator, the point of personal privilege have got, had gotten to the point where it was just abused. Um, Richie didn't like what I said. Point of privilege, he's got that wrong, Your Honor. His facts are, Your Honor, excuse me, I'm, I'm a lawyer, I used to going up talking to judges. Mr. Moderator, his facts are wrong, it should be this. And it had gotten to the point where we were listening to two people arguing instead of the debate. So I cut that out. I just said, nope, point of personal privilege is exactly this, and that's all I'm going to allow. So it's really ended all of those kind of sidebar debates that don't add to the conversation, don't add to the discussion at all. Um, this year, one of the things you did receive in the package was the vote of the electronic was the report of the Electronic Voting Study Committee. I'm not going to make a pitch for it, but basically the committee which I was on wants to get clickers so we can vote using clickers. It would instantly tally. It would instantly have a roll call, pointing back at Steve who's on his phone, who I hate in town meeting when people are on their phone. I'll yell at you, so put it on vibrate. It'll instantly record it. So we can have a roll call. If we don't, if we just use a for tally, it's going to record how you voted, and the next day it's going to be on the website, even if it's just a tally vote. Why do I like that? Because we're all representative town meeting members. The folks in my precinct should know how I voted. If they don't know how I voted, how do they know they want me to get back next year? How do they know I should be reelected? Um, so your votes on all the articles will be recorded and, and somehow the town will make them get on the website. So we're going to know. That's going to change the culture of town meeting a little bit, but not a whole lot because we're still going to vote yes and no. It's just going to be you're going to be responsible for your vote. Um, I usually don't vote. Um, usually it doesn't matter. During the roll call last year I did vote. I recorded my vote because people should have a an idea of how I voted. And that's true for all of us. So that's what the Electronic Voting Study Committee is going to be about and how it's one of the things that's going to change our culture a little bit, but not a lot. Um, if you're ever at any point confused about what's going on, you're confused about what we're voting on, please stand up, point of order. Mr. Moderator, what are we voting on? What actually are we voting on? A lot of people will get up and with the warrant in their hand, it says, we're voting on something that's not in this. I'll roll my eyes at you. Because um, you should ask the person next to you. You get up and ask me before the meeting. I'm there at about 7.30 every night. I usually end up leaving about 11.30 to talk to people. We have a break at, um, when do we break? 8.30? 9.30? 9.30. We break at 9.30 for 10 minutes so we can all go out and get a cookie if someone's selling cookies or coffee or whatever. But people will come up to me during the break and ask me questions. I want you to never be confused. 
I want you always to know what we're doing, and I don't want anyone to not feel like they're welcome and don't have a opportunity to come talk to me. Or you'll be able to see who are the veteran town meeting members around you. They'll gladly explain to you what's going on, how you can do something, how you can make an amendment, how you can get up and speak, get on the list, um, what you were voting on. Nudge them to say, what are we doing? What are we voting on? They'll explain it to you. They're your fellow town members, your fellow Arlingtonians, your fellow town meeting members. They want you to know what's going on. They're going to explain it to you. They're going to generally be, be kind and, and um, pleasant to you. If they're not, well, sit next to someone else the next day. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I mean, you don't want to sit next to that person because they're probably going to be no fun anyways. Um, in this handout, which was on your seat, it has various questions we tried to anticipate. This was off the town website. I kind of um, cut and pasted and modified it a little bit, so it was um, a little more germane to us tonight. How do we prepare? Read everything. Um, you probably aren't going to get the FinCom report, Finance Committee report, till Monday night. It might be on the town website by tomorrow afternoon under the town meeting. I don't know if you've ever been to the Arlington town website. Go to the left hand, go down to town governance, town meeting, and there'll be a link to the site. All of the reports that you've received in the mail and the additional ones are going to be on that site. We also have a town meeting members email list, which I have up front also how you can join that list. You just go to a certain um, website and put in your information. All of these reports are distributed on that list. If you have substitute motions, you can post them to that list so your members, your fellow members can get them a day or two in advance. It's all about educating, all about making sure you know what's going on and are able to go into the meeting on any particular night, have a really good idea of what we're going to debate and what the issues are so that you can form your opinion besides trying to form it on the fly. I've explained what the warrant is, the warning to the citizens. Um, I told you what to do when you get to town hall. Town meeting members have a right to speak. Get on the list. If you want to introduce somebody, um, last year, Stephen, did you introduce? Bobby Jefferson introduced Gary Tibbetts. Oh, okay, Bobby introduced Gary. Bobby came up to me before the meeting and said, Mr. Tibbetts wants to speak on this article. Can you recognize me early? Uh, citizens have a right to speak if they live in town. If they're from out of town, they're not an Arlington citizen, but they can speak if they're introduced and the town meeting member votes on it. A citizen just has to be introduced by a town meeting member. Um, they have the right to speak for the seven minutes, but it's a combined seven minutes. So if Bobby Jefferson got up and spoke for two minutes, he only left Gary five. If he spoke for 30 seconds, Gary got six and a half minutes. So if you have someone you want to introduce to speak on an article, let me know before the meeting. Get there 10 minutes early, come up, just tell me. John, I want so-and-so to speak, can make sure I get recognized early. I will. I'll recognize you right off the bat because if a citizen came down and is that emotional about an issue and has something good to tell us, I want to hear him. Um, I'll get you right to the front of the list. If you fake me out and don't really have someone, your chances of getting called next time, you're on the bottom of the list. Um, one town meeting member, she, she faked me out. I, I scolded her afterwards, but I'm not going to say who it was because um, we had terminated the debate and she said, oh, I'm not understanding something. She got up and tried to continue debate. Um, Steve probably remembers who it is, but I'm not going to say, God, I love the lady, so I'm not going to say it. Um, but don't do that. It, it pisses me off, frankly and I'm not going to recognize you next time around. <laughs> I'm generally a fair guy. Um, so you, you know what to do when you get there. And, and that's about it. There's really not a whole heck of a lot to prepare. It's the hardest part, just to read everything, go through it. Um, does anyone have any questions about this part of it? Yeah, come on. You have to actually come up because we're going to get it recorded So for the other town meeting members. Um, regarding substitute motions, um, do they need to be submitted 
um, before the town meeting or can they be submitted at the town meeting by hand raising or they should substitute motions you have to be on everybody's chair you have to print, you go to the manager's office with your substitute they will let you use it one of their copier machines they'll print 300 copies for you you have to get there before the meeting put it on everybody's chair but the meeting before we're going to talk about it Okay, that's so, right. That's what I meant. Yeah. yeah. Okay. So if you want to, if it's anything after Article 12, have it on everybody's chair Monday. Monday. Anything okay. before that. I'm thinking Article 12 is what we're going to get to, but I pref I l I'm not going to tell you your uh, your substitute's bad or good. I just ask that you run it by me beforehand, so I can tell you if your substitute was within the scope, if it's in the proper form. I'm not going to rewrite it for you unless you ask me to do some um, uh, stylistic changes so that it goes with the way the rest of the bylaws are written. We have um, two of our members, John Warden, the old moderator, and John Maher, the old town council, about 10 years ago went through the bylaws and straightened them out. They were, after 200 years, they'd gotten pretty messy. They recodified all the bylaws, got everything where it should be, and they're very particular about it. Um, they don't want them to get messed up again. And so, I'm helping them by looking at things beforehand and say, hey, you want to put this as article, Title II, Article 8, Section B3. This should really be B4. So let's put it in the right place so we don't have to have them try and amend your amendment on the floor. So that's all I'm looking at. I'm not going to say you shouldn't do this or um, you, you can't do that. I'm going to just look at it, make sure it's stylistically right and within the scope of the article. Because no use printing 300 things, handing them all out, and then have me shoot you down a town meeting floor. So that's the only thing on um, substitutes. Anyone else have a question? Um, when and, and how exactly is the uh, warrant created? Um, it looks like the town manager has lots of insertions. And yeah. The, how, what are the exact rules yeah, for that? Um, the town, um, which committee? The town meeting procedure committee put a warrant article in four years ago that mandated they open the warrant on the first Friday, the first Friday of December, and they can't close it till the third Friday of January. So the warrant's open for those seven, eight weeks. During that time, any citizen can get a warrant article. You'll see some of them, um, 10 citizens. Um, one was Mr. Jamison and 10 citizens. He, he thought about a warrant article, went out and got 10 of his neighbors to sign it, submitted it. It has to go in the warrant. That's your right as a citizen. After that third January, the warrant closes. The selectmen then order them. I'll go over the order in a second. Um, and then that's it, it's finalized. Although they seem to slip a couple of warrant articles in after it closes because it's their warrant. Um, by that I mean the, the state law charges the selectmen with the duty and the obligation to open the warrant, close the warrant, and produce it and give it to town meeting. Once it's printed and once it's submitted to all the citizens, it's our warrant, town meetings. No one else can touch it. We decide, our well, moderator, decides how we're going to do it, how we're going to discuss it, and they can't change it once it's printed. But that, this, is what people come up with their substitute motions out of, and the recommended votes of the selectmen and, and the things we actually discuss and vote on. This is the warning to the citizens. Okay, I, I, just a follow-on question. Yeah. Um, are all the bylaws uh, for the town created in town meeting or do the selectmen, do they have a ratification nope. capacity that... They, okay, they can suggest bylaws. Okay. Uh, you'll see in here, um, oh, I don't know, particularly know which number, I haven't memorized them. We're going to change the dog rules this year. Uh, before it just said basically section um, three, article one, you got to keep your dog in a leash, one sentence. We're going to delete that and we're substituting in its place about two and a half pages of doggy rules. We're going to talk a lot about it. We like to talk about dogs. We'll, we'll discuss dogs. We'll discuss dogs for 
half the meeting, maybe a whole meeting. Um, yeah. They suggest it, we approve it, or we say no. We can vote it down. We can say, no, we don't want to do this. And we can just vote no, and it's dead. They can't bring it back. Same with all the um, zoning bylaws. The redevelopment board, who's, um, you also got their recommended votes in their report. Mm. They make all the zoning bylaw recommendations. If we're going to change the zoning district, we're going to change the height of the building, we're going to change the amount of green space that has to be in any particular lot. And all that gets filtered into town meeting. It all gets okay. given to us. Oh. We get to deal with it. We can say, no, we don't want to do that. Yeah. We, as a legislative body, make the bylaws, make the zoning bylaws, and spend the money. Any other questions on functioning a town meeting or how the warrant works? Is there a set ending time for the uh, every evening? OK, the, I'm just going to repeat. The question is, um, basically, what time do we end? We start at 8. We break at 9.30 for 10 minutes. We end at 11. Um, if we're really close to the end of a warrant of article, looks like we're ready to vote on it. Sometimes we'll go five minutes early. Or if we voted on something, and instead of starting another article that's going to take a half hour, an hour to debate, I'll ask someone if someone wants to make a motion to adjourn early. That usually doesn't happen. I like to go to at least 11. Because over the past several years, in fact, as long as I can remember, we've always had about 70 warrant articles on the warrant. And it takes anywhere from 8 to 10 meetings to go through it. If we're, we start breaking early, we're just adding meetings. And it, frankly, there's no AC in there. Um, the air doesn't really move too well through the room. And if we're in here at the end of May, it's hot. It, it gets hot, it gets muggy, people's tempers get short. We want to get out. By the end of the, by the eighth meeting, I'm done, you're done. We just want to end. And it's always down to the last, uh, the, the housekeeping articles, I call them. Things that are there every single year. Um, other post-employment benefits. Every year, OPEB, it's there. We have to vote money to OPEB. We don't, have a, we don't have an option. State law says we have to do it. FinCom says this is how much we're obligated to do this year. We've got to vote it, so we're going to move through it. We're going to do it. But if we cut all our meetings short, we're going to come back someday for a half hour and vote on these housekeeping things. So I, I like to keep the meeting moving. I like to keep it there till 11. Any other questions? Yep. Hi. Um, so if the Board of Selectmen recommend no, a uh, no action, yeah. and is the only recourse to offer an amendment? If town meeting likes the article the way it is and doesn't want an amendment, is, doesn't want well, to amend it, can they override it, that yeah, motion? If there's a warrant article. Again, that's just a warning. Selectmen say no action. It was one of their motions. <laughs> They're the main movement on bylaws, um, zoning bylaws, is redevelopment board, um, anything having to do with town personnel. The selectmen are the main movements off financial articles, the budgets, uh, money for parades, money for monuments, money for this, money for that, all come out of the FinCom, the Finance Committee. They're the recommended votes that we'll vote on. If one of those bodies says no action, if you want to discuss it, you have to make a motion. You have to come up with a, um, a substitute motion for no, from the no action. So you'll have come up to me. If you're changing what they say, it's an amendment. If it's a brand new and it's substituting in full, it's a substitute. You'll run it by me. Everybody will have it. When it comes to Article 12 or 13, whatever the no action, I know you have it because you've given it to me beforehand because you have to give me three signed originals. I'm going to call you. What's your name? Gil. Irizarry. Azari? Irizarry. Irizarry. I'm yes. saying, Mr. Irizarry, do you have something for us? And you're going to like get up and make your pitch and make your motion for a substitute. If you don't do that, we're moving on. We're on to the next article. Or if you just think you're going to get up and surprise us with me, I'm not going to know you want. I'm not going to know you're going to do it. And I'm going to move on before I even see your hand. Because there's no action unless I know about it. I'm not even going to look up. See, no action, all in favor, yes, boom, next article. And you'll be sitting there going, whoa, wait. 
it's like you have to move to, re if you don't like the way we voted, then you can move to reconsider if you voted on the prevailing side and then try and get the meeting to open the article back up again. Mm. Okay. Good luck. <laughs> <laughs> they, that, that takes a two thirds vote as well. And um, once something's done, they really won't too often, unless there's new facts or we did something highly illegal and town council finally figured it out or I figured it out or someone else figured it out and said, John, look, we, we can't do this. Someone will move, through, then we'll reconsider. But otherwise, if it's just you were sleeping and missed it, they're not gonna take that. So you have to have your substitute motion ready. I gotta know about it before we reach the article. And just because I wanna make sure I understand clearly. Yeah. If I like the Warren article the way it's written. I don't no, want this. to amend it or substitute you, it. You're not but. looking at the Warren articles anymore. You're looking at the recommended votes. Oh, okay. This thing is strictly your agenda at this point. Mm -hmm. Forget about what's written in here, except for the bold highlighted topics, Article 15, uh, collective bargaining. Forget about everything below that. You're gonna look at FinCom report Article 15 and see what their recommended vote is in this. Okay. Because this doesn't right. matter anymore. This is strictly our agenda. Okay. These are what matters. This is what we voted on. This is what becomes a town law. So if you like this, if you don't like this, you have to amend it. I see. Yeah. And if it's a no action and you want to say, hey, I liked what was recommended in here, you're going to call me. I'm going to say, this is what you have to do. Okay. Thank you. Um, this is how we can take care of that. I, I did that this afternoon with a gentleman. I spent 15, 20 minutes with him. We wrote the new thing that he wants to do, and he's going to present it. You'll have it in your chair Monday. He's an older town meeting member. He knew what to do. But if you've got any questions, please call. Great. Yeah. Thank you. Yep. Related to the question of doing illegal things. Yeah. Um, <laughs> Article 17, for instance, I think 18 as well, the selection uh, vote no action and claim that the town meeting doesn't actually have the power to take the action contemplated. Well, um, I'm going to look and see what those two are, and I'll tell you if they're right. So overnight parking fees was 17? Yeah. Um, we, there's a strict definition of what we're allowed to do and what they're allowed to do and what's within their purview, what's in our purview. Right. We don't have the power to tell the selectmen what to do. So uh, 17, overnight parking fees, 18. Um, Eighteen amendments safe. Overnight parking, daytime parking. We can't tell the selectmen what to do, but we can do a resolution. We resolve that. It'd be really good if the selectmen did this. 252 people in favor of it. No one had opposed. We can't order them to do it, but we can tell them this is how we feel. Oh, they're going to get up and they're going to tell us, um, you can't do it, you can't tell us what to do, and I'm going to pipe in. It's a resolution. I don't see any problem with it. And then we, we, we can vote on it. Because there's a few of those in here. Yeah. There's three or four this year where they'll end up being resolutions or no actions. But we're expressing the will of the town meeting and through that, the will of the citizens of the town. We're, we're like one of the three checks and balances if you look at it that way. Anything else on the procedural end of it? Okay, um, you got the warrant. It follows, believe it or not, a pattern. We start off with the pomp and circumstance uh, Monday night. Um, article two, now state of the town. I guess Mr. Dunn's gonna get up and tell us what the state of the town is. We're in great financial shape because we have the override and everything's wonderful and we had a great parade, yay. Article three, reports of committees. Every night um, I call for reports of committees. The various committees will get up. The first night the selectmen will get up, say you've all received our report. They move that all the recommended votes of the board of selectmen be before the, before the meeting. Um, I'll take a yes vote. Uh, everybody votes yes, no one votes. Some people might vote no, but it doesn't matter because it's just a perfunctory vote. What that essentially does is we have received all their report, we've received their votes, and I don't have to read what their recommended vote is every time we come to an article. It's already before us. Same with all the FinCom articles. 
I don't have to read article, I think the budgets might be mid-50s this year, maybe 55. I don't have to go through and read every single line item. It's before you. It's assumed we've all read it. Um, so we go through first, it's the reports of committees. Measure of wooden bark. The heck is that? Um, it's a colonial position. In the old days, when you got your cord of wood, you think someone shorted you, you call the measure of wooden bark, they come down, measure it, see if you got your cord. Or if you got your cord of, um, I don't know how mulch is measured, by the yard, cubic yeah. yard? Yeah. If you think your cubic yard is short, the measure of wooden bark would go out and measure it for you. Um, it's Elsie Fiore last few years. Before that had been another longtime town meeting member who had passed away. Elsie is our, there's two long timers over 50 years, Harry McCabe and Elsie. Elsie, Harry deferred to Elsie. I asked, which, I asked them both which one, who wants to do it, and Harry said, give it to Elsie. So she's our measure of wooden bark. Um, I'll have the selectmen nominate her and we'll all vote yes and give Elsie a little hand, clap for her, and she'll look to Murr and smile at us. Don't let her fool you. Don't let her fool you. She's a smart lady. Um, then we elected an assistant town moderator. Uh, the assistant is if I ever get sick and I don't show up, he's going to step in. Or if I have a conflict of interest, if there's an article comes up, that I have a financial interest in, obviously I have to stand down. But there are none this year, so I'm not going to have to do that. So we have an assistant. And then after that, it goes right into the zoning bylaws. Zoning bylaws, um, if we're going to change the zoning bylaws, it has to be by a two-third vote of town meeting. Two-thirds of the members have to agree that we want to do this. If they don't, if, it, if it's a simple majority by one or two vote, it loses. You've got to get two-thirds of the voters to change a, by, a zoning bylaw. Because we're dealing with people's land, we're dealing with their property, we're dealing with their property rights. We should, and I think it's correct, it's by state law, you have to get a two-thirds vote to restrict my right to use my land. And that, that seems fair to me. Um, then we go to the regular bylaws. Those are just a regular old majority vote. And after the regular bylaws, we get into um, a lot of the citizens articles and eventually we're going to get into the budgets. Um, so the first one you're going to see is article 27 endorsement of CDBG. Federal government um, gives us community developed block grant money. Um, they've been doing it from the 70s and they've never taken it away from us yet. There's not a whole heck of a lot of it over the years it's been decreasing our funding from the feds has been decreasing pretty steadily as they run out of money. The spending of that money is controlled by um, HUD, urban health, Housing and Urban Development Rules and Regulations. The selectmen get to spend it however they want within those parameters. They get up and they tell us we're going to spend it on these 10, 12 things and this is how we're going to spend it. It's a feel-good article. We get to vote yes. Well, we can say no, they're going to still spend it the way they want. We can't, that's one of the ones where we can't tell them what to do. It's just strictly, this is, they're telling us, we're going to give the Boys and Girls Club money for an elevator. We're going to rebuild the stone wall in front of the library, which they've been doing. We've, that was HUD, um, CBGB money a couple of years back. They finally went through all the process in getting it. So every year they do that. They give the, um, the um, elder services money for a van so they can drive the elderly around town and get them to um, the, the center or voting or wherever they have to go. We, we buy them a van or we fund the van every year. Then we get into the, bar, the, um, the budgets. First, the capital planning budget. Um, Charlie Foskett of the capital planning committee, he's on the finance committee, he's going to present that budget. Um, He's going to get up and tell us how we're going to spend our capital money. Anything more than five years, it's capital. We're going to put a new roof on town hall. We're going to do build a Thompson School. That's all capital funding. That's all capital money. If we bond it, which we do, all the capital budgets are bonded. We float the money out. We get people to buy our bonds. Um, Two-thirds vote for bonding. Because what we're doing with bonding is we are tying future town meetings hands on how money's going to be spent. So to do that, we have to have a two-third vote. 
Um, then we get to the regular budget. The way I handle the regular budget is I ask them to print it bigger this year. The FinCom will give us a report with 0.2 pitch. <laughs> I can't read it. I, I ask them to make it bigger. I, literally, it's so teeny tiny. On, and it, it details out every single department, every position within each department, how many um, administrative secretaries, how many managers, how many clerk typists, how many this, how many um, uh, tree climbers, how many cops, how many officers, how, many, um, how much brass, how much patrolmen, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. There's H, I think it goes to H, so maybe 13 or 14 separate departments. What I'm going to do and what I've been doing, it works really well, is I'm going to go through and say, does anyone want to talk about the library? If you want to talk about the library budget yelled hold, I'll put a check next to it. I go through all the different budgets. Then I go back. Okay, someone wanted to talk about library. Who was it? That person might have one question. It might get down to 15, 20 minutes of debate on the, that particular budget. If no one yelled hold, we're moving on. No one wants to talk about town council's budget, we're moving on. Um, otherwise, the only, then we vote on it en masse, the whole budget in one vote. The way they used to do it was all in favor of the police budget, yes, no. All in favor of the fire department budget, yes, no. It took too much time. So we do it this way. We get to the meat of it that people really want to talk about it. We talk about it. We'll debate it to death, and then we move on. Sort of my own inverse rule of proportion. The more money we spend, the less people will talk about it. We're going to spend 500 bucks on a parade. We'll talk about it until it's dead. We spend $55 million on the school. We talk about it for 10 minutes and move on. I, you'd think it'd be the other way around, but I think the folks are just too daunted by it. But don't be. If you have a question about it, ask. It, up the front of the room, you'll see me and Stephanie and Gabe on the stage. In front of us, uh, the selectmen, um, the selectmen staff, the finance committee, and uh, this, this is as I'm looking down at them, so it'll be the opposite for you. So it'll be the selectmen over here, to the left of the center mic, their staff, the finance committee, over in that corner, which is actually that corner of the room, is the um, redevelopment board. Off in the left, left-hand front corner, uh, the chief of police, Bobby Jefferson, chief uh, Fred Ryan, chief of police, Bobby Jefferson, chief of the fire department, um, Mr. Rademacher, the head of um, public works, and I think Karen Cove might sit up there too sometimes, head of the, yeah, no. Board of Health sits on the left next to Dave Good. Um, but up front, I think, is the head of um, Human Services. And over there in the far left is Board of Health, Dave Good, the tech guy. He's the head of the IT department. He runs that new big screen we have. Um, I'll tell you about the screen. Um, and then a couple other people rotate in and out as their budgets come up or if they might have questions. If you have any questions for any of those people, any of the department heads, the selectmen, Please, they want you to approach them now, tomorrow, Monday, before the meeting, ask them the question so that they can be prepared and give you an answer for it. They hate, hate it if they get um, a gotcha question. How many times did you arrest someone for drunk driving on Mill Street? He doesn't know. But if you ask him today, he'll have that stat for you Monday. They'll, they'll get the information you want because they want to give it to you. These are our town employees, they're our public servants. They want to give you the information. Just give them the opportunity to do it. And they, they will. They're, they're really friendly folks. None of them bite. They'll all get on a first name basis with you. Um, and they want to provide that information to you. So please, just approach them. Or if you're kind of hesitant about approaching them, ask me. I'll translate the question to them. Um, seems like half my job during. And I don't do much work right before town meeting. I do town meeting work, but that's all right. I can do what I was signing up for. Um, but I'm glad to help you get that information you need. So then after we get to the budgets, we then have all the, the housekeeping stuff. Um, 
appropriations for committees, appropriations for parades, all the appropriation articles. Those are all FinCom articles. If you have questions about them, ask Al Tosti, ask um, Alan Jones. Alan, good guy. He's got a big ponytail and glasses. Kind of looks like a leftover hippie, but really smart. He'll give you any answer you want. Um, then we get into stabilization funds. Stabilization funds are a convenient place they've found to park money so we can't spend it. Um, it takes a two-thirds vote to create a stabilization fund. It takes a two-thirds vote to put money into a stabilization fund. It takes a two-thirds vote to take the money out of a stabilization fund. What would you want a stabilization fund for? Um, right now, we voted that cool override. We're taking in more money than we need to run the town. That extra money is being put into a long-term stabilization fund so we don't have to have another override. So when, we, when our, ex our expenses are going that way because of health insurance and inflation and pay raises and all of this, our income's going this way, eventually we're not going to have enough income. We'll take it out of the stabilization fund for a couple of years. That's, that's the plan. We also have stabilization funds for, um, I think we have one for the rink. We have one for tip fees for Neswick. Our garbage all goes up to Andover, gets burned in Neswick. Um, I forget what Neswick means, but it's our incinerator. For a while, we were getting excess money back. We weren't from them because, I don't know, this, the whole scheme, but we ended up with a whole bunch of extra money. We put it into a stabilization fund so we can lower our tip fees. A tip fee is how much we have to pay to have, um, it's not waste, whoever our new garbage hauler is. JR, right there, yeah. For them to go up there and dump a truck costs 100 bucks. Uh, as we're, I'm making the numbers up, but we only pay 65 because we have money out of the stabilization fund. So we're offsetting future expenses with present money. That's what stabilization funds are for. So you'll see this year we only have two things for stabilization. And then it comes out to my favorite, free cash. I couldn't figure out what free cash was for a couple of years. It's extra money that they're just going to put aside for when they overspend a budget, snow. They need to get that money to remove snow, especially this year. They budgeted 390000 or whatever it is. Good year, you're all set. Bad year, they ought to pay the guys to plow. That comes out of free cash. It's the slush fund, but it's not a slush fund. It has to be accounted for. So that's sort of the warrant, um, where the money goes, where it comes from, and how we change this town laws. Any questions at all? That's kind of a lot. Yep. That's a, a, a lot of issues in one single uh, item. Yeah. How many changes can, can you make to that, or, or what kind of what gets attention as far as you, you, you can make. Can, can I say, I, I propose that the, the town operator makes, uh, he's paid $3,000 a year. I'd step down. <laughs> I would ask them to be recognized and say, great idea. You can <laughs> do that. that that would be um, that would technically be under the clerk's budget. I'm paid through the clerk. I get 500 bucks a year. Um, you would make a motion to amend um, budget 15, B moderator, delete 500, substitute 3,000. Al Tosti's going to get up and say, "Well, it's a balanced budget. Where are you going to get the money?" And you're either going to say, "Well, I'm going to take it out of the selectman's budget." Selectman are only going to get 500 bucks, so you could say, it's not my problem, Al, it's your problem. Balance the budget, you're at a thing calm. You can, make, you can make a recommendation, they're going to say how you're going to do it. You can either tell them or you can throw it back in their lap. That's on the budgets. We are by state law obligated to have a balanced budget. <coughs> You're throwing a lot of money into free cash. You want to give me 2,500 bucks more? Take it out of free cash. You can make any recommendation. You can tell them what to do. It's just the same with the, by, the bylaw changes. You don't like it, you make a recommendation and change it. And town meeting will often go along with you. Um, they, they aren't opposed to amending things on the floor. As long as they think you have a rational reason for doing it, what you're proposing sounds good, and it makes sense to them, they'll do it. 
It'll go along with you. For yeah. something like that, which can be expressed in one sentence. Yeah. Uh, are, are you getting this? Uh, no. Okay. Sorry, guys. Yeah. No problem. So for something like, like that that could be expressed in one sentence, yeah. would that have to be written up and distributed in no. 300 copies? Okay. That, that I would I'd let that slide because uh -huh. that is small. Yeah. It's only one or two sentences. It's very easily understood. Mm -hmm. So that is, I, I've given myself a little discretion, so I'm not a total dictator and mm -hmm. I'm not stifling debate. Yeah. Something minor like that, I'd allow in. Okay. Because behind me, there's this big screen. Um, it's a backlit, back projector. Um, we've got a projector that's attached to a PowerPoint. We've gotten better over the last couple of years. It used to be a front lit and it would be in my eyes and I didn't want it up there and everybody hated it. Mm -hmm. Now we've gotten it much better. We're coming into the modern age. Dave Good sits there. He's a town meeting member, so I don't want to put too much um, responsibility on Dave, but if you have recommended votes or uh, substitutes, if we can get them to him as well, he can project them on that screen. Mm -hmm. So the more sophisticated members know this and they get it to me and ask me to get it to Dave. Dave will get it up there on the screen, people can see it. And they can see what they're voting on as well as their piece of paper. A little small one, ooh, I wanna give the moderator 3,000 bucks. He'll be able to type that in in a couple seconds. But again, he's, a, he's there in his capacity as the IT department. He's there as a capacity as a town meeting member, so we don't wanna overburden him because he's got a right to listen to. Yeah. Thanks. Yep. Yep. So, <laughs> Got to come back yes, up here. On, on lines. I mean, so this, you, you know, you sort of introduced as a, you know, as a doctrine. You know, we're following this, and right. we, do, we don't get outside of it. But considering the scope of what we're covering, mm -hmm. then within that scope, getting into areas such as, you know, adjusting your salary and taking out of, let's say, the assessors. So, you know, That's within the scope. So, right, so, so we can go into a million different ways, right? Because there, there's a lot of things to be considered uh, with budget it's issues. It's in the and, scope of the budget. It's yeah. in the scope of that article. You can't vote on appropriation for uh, parades to put a moderator's salary for 3,000 bucks in scope of the, the parade um, article. That's outside the scope. But if within the scope of the budget, anything having to do with how we're spending money it's fine. Okay. That's great. Yeah, I'm, I'm kind of lenient about scope within a broad sense. But if you get up and you start talking about, um, you know, the police should really be able to talk to my neighbor about his noisy car because we're in the police budget. I'm going to say, no, that's outside, that's, that's outside of this budget scope. That's under something else. Or you got to go talk to the Chief of Police, you're going to go talk to Fred Ryan, tell him to enforce the bylaws. So, you know, this, it, it's, is it reasonable what you're trying to do in scope, or is it just left field? It's left field. The crowd's going to yell at you, and I'm going to have to tell you to, um, you know, bring it, back, bring it back in. Any other questions? Okay. Y'all have a good idea of what it is, and you're gonna call me up tomorrow when you have questions. <laughs> you know, I'm serious when I say email me. Um, you have you got my letter in your package up in the top right hand corner. Where'd my letter go? There's um, my email address. I'm pretty good with that. I get back right away if I can. I'm on the computer all day. My office number and my home phone number. So please, questions. I'd rather you come in knowledgeable than come in confused. All right. Thank you for coming. Thank you. Yeah.